Welcome everybody. In this video, we are going to talk about the strategy design pattern. The pattern is about defining a family or a collection of algorithms that can be plugged into a specific process. So let's say we're making a cup of tea. We have the same ingredients, cup, tea, and water, but the process of making it can be different. We can also add milk if we want to, right? So if we're making English tea, you add the milk as well. Now, there is a big debate. Do you put the tea in and the water first, or do you put the milk in first? Those can be two different strategies of how you set something up, right? How do you create your tea? Put the water in and then the milk, or you can put the milk in first and then the water. Those will be interchangeable strategies that can act upon an ingredient. Remember, if you're enjoying these videos, don't forget to like, subscribe, and if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. And if you put the milk in first, do what are you doing? Stop. Stop it. Strategy pattern is super simple. In my opinion, it can be applied in various ways. Chances are you have already been using it without knowing it. Let's take a look at what it can look like. We can have a controller like a file controller, a car controller, a animal controller, which can represent an API endpoint where you can get your data or you can upload a file to. And then in the constructor, we can provide a strategy. In our case, this is file storage. So how do we want to store data? Do we want to store it locally? Do we want to store it on an S3 storage? Or do we want to store it on some kind of bespoke storage, right? So we've built the storage client or the storage mechanism ourselves, and we want to go ahead and utilize that. So this strategy is interchangeable as long as we go ahead and follow the interface. Now, this may look very familiar and could be a kin of the repository pattern, right? So if you are using PostgreSQL and then you're migrating to MongoDB or you need to substitute it to some other storage, maybe Redis, I don't know, those would be each individual strategies. In our case, the each individual strategy is the local file storage, the S3 storage, or the bespoke storage. Other than that, there is not much to say about the strategy pattern, right? You have some kind of process and a piece of that process, you want to sort of lift it out and bring another one in kind of like a lamp, right? How do I want to illuminate my room? The wiring in the walls, I don't touch that. I just go ahead, take the lamp, I unscrew it, I take it out and put another one in, maybe a red one, a blue one, maybe a less energy efficient, maybe a more energy efficient, maybe a solar powered light bulb, you know, light bulb with solar panels around it. So it charges itself infinite energy. Uh, it's patented or, or go, go, go make a million dollars. Anyway, uh, yeah, not much to say about it. Some ways that you can go about doing it. You can basically have your process with the interchange interchangeable strategy of A or B, where you do some kind of thing. But when you do the thing with a particular strategy, that thing news up that particular instance and implements that specific strategy, right? So you may not need to control this, like how do you instantiate it? How do you supply it? Maybe you do it through the dependency injection container, but this is just a way that you can apply it. There is also a kind of like an ad hoc way to do it. You can see it in the service configuration of your ASP.NET Core applications, the strategy or where, where you use, utilize the builder to build up some options for a service. It's a strategy for setting up a service. Set of functions are one of the more simpler ways to use a strategy. As you've seen in the beginning, you can provide a whole service wrapper strategies, essentially, where you're combining the strategy pattern with an adapter or a wrapper. You can also combine the strategy pattern with the composite design pattern to get middleware. So in this example, I'll show you that we have sort of a base scaffolding structure for our middleware, where we can append the next middleware we hold the next uh, the next pipe or the next function that we want to execute. Remember that strategy is just a function that we want to substitute. It may come in the form of an object with some state around it. However, the main star of the show is the function that we're interchanging. Okay. So the next is the next function that we want to execute in the chain of the middleware. The strategy is composable because it holds the next thing and we can uh, wire it up in any way that we want. We have the star of the show, the do function that we can interchange. And then we have a convenient function next to trigger the next piece of the middleware safely. 
We will supply a number and then we can do something to that number. We can either log it, we can perform a transaction around it, or we can perform some kind of action or addition, subtraction, multiplication. In our case, the log first says that it's logging a number and then performs the next action. Then we have the transaction, which essentially wraps the next action in a transaction. Let's imagine it will throw an exception. We roll back the transaction or perform some kind of other action. We can also have a stopwatch strategy. So we wrap some kind of action in a stopwatch so we can time how long that action has taken. And then we can have an actual business logic action where we add or perform some work on some kind of entity. And of course, that is still not limited to triggering the next strategy. And if we go to the top, the way that we define it, we start with the logging strategy, we append the transaction strategy, and then we append the addition strategy of five. We then perform the chain on the 10. We get this first output of first logging, then starting the transaction, then the addition of the number, and then finishing the transaction. I dump a little separator and then we create a second chain. Again, we start with the logging, then we append the addition of 10 and then we append the transaction, right? So this is where we have a piece of a function and because it's composable, we have a whole family, a collection of functions and they can be chained after another in a controlled manner. So the ability to place next gives us the option of wrapping a function. If we had pure function composition, that means something has to go into the function and before it goes into the next function, it has to finish with the first function. So we essentially take two pipes and we just connect them together with middleware. We kind of take one pipe and we can stick it in the middle of the other one, kind of like that when water is coming down the pipe and you can just stick one on the side of it. A three-way pipe if you'd like. So water is going down the transaction with the next it is going to the side and then it is going back in and finishing the transaction. With pure function composition, we would need the input and the output for all the strategies to be the same so they can be chainable one after another. However, in this example, we can place one inside of the other. That is pretty much all I have on the strategy design pattern. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like, subscribe. As always, if you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section. Don't forget to check out the description and have a good day.